Hey guys, it's Jean-Claude, and today is the last deck we have for $25 patrons. This one goes to Jeff Patterson. Let's go right over here. Good luck to you, Jeff. Let's see. Still trying to go from the bottom because I'm used to the old set. Alright, this set, this box so far has been pretty good. I like a lot of the cards. Interesting, we've been getting quite a bit of Brobnar and Sanctum. But they've just been very strong the entire time. So let's hope you get, uh, if you get the same houses, let's hope you get those same sort of cards. Some great combos. If you get other houses, let's see some new exciting cards. All right. Your houses are... Whoa, okay, totally different. Logos, Dis, and Shadows. Zaara, Marsh, Bandit. Okay. Now, a lot of people uh, have been talking about how these deck names actually seem to be a heck of a lot more coherent. I agree. Uh, I do like the names quite a bit more, because no matter what, you can at least look across and be like, okay, it's not just some sort of silly, jumbled mess of words. All right. Here we go. Is this our first time opening this, right? Yeah, I believe so. Hey, we're starting off with the rigged lottery. We had this and I think the first deck of this box. One amber whenever you play it. Each player discards the top five cards of their deck. Free Shadows card discarded, its owner gains one amber. A great way to use this is whenever it's really late game and your opponent maybe only has like two or three cards left in their deck. That's how you really rig the lottery. Special delivery. Amber whenever you play, it's an artifact. Omni effect, sacrifice it, deal three damage to a flame creature. If that damage destroys that creature, you get to purge it. Oh, two of those, wow, that's awesome. Dusk Runner, it's an upgrade. This creature gains Reap, Steel, and Amber. Swindle, Alpha, Omega, play, Steel, 3, Amber. So for those of you unfamiliar with both Alpha and Omega, Alpha has to be the first thing you do in a turn. Omega ends your turn after you play the card. This card only allows you to steal 3, and that is all you're going to do in your turn. I want to say this about this card. I have seen it used to great effect, but it is very, very situational. Do not be afraid to discard this card. Nerve Blast, play Steel and Amber. If you do, you deal two damage to a creature. Lamindra, one power deploy. That's where it can be put anywhere in your battle line. It's elusive, and its neighbors gain elusive. Gamgee, two power elusive. Reap, if your opponent has more amber than you, you get the Steel and Amber. Now, this guy's been pretty good for me. Oh, and you have two of them, very nice. What is this? Furtive Investors, one amber whenever you play it. If your opponent has more amber than you, gain one amber for each key your opponent has forged. Okay, so it's a way to try and come back if you're behind. Not too bad in this set. Oh, and you have two of them. Every time I've been saying it's pretty good here, you seem to be getting multiples of them. Bad Penny, one power, destroyed, return it to your hand. Okay, oh, it's a rare from the first set. I've noticed that the rares that are coming back from set one are actually really good in this set. So like this card was not good in the first set. It basically did almost nothing. In this set, this effect is actually amazing. It's gonna be very interesting to see how many set one cards are suddenly just overpowered within a set two deck. It's an upgrade, Amber. Whenever you play it, this creature gains action. Swap this creature with another friendly creature of the battle line. You may use that other creature this turn, so now instead of just being able to use the other creature like you were doing before, now you could put this on like a card that you want to move around because it's giving bonuses to the other creatures as well. That's awesome. Crazy Killing Machine. Artifact. Action. Discard the top card of each player's deck. For each of those cards, destroy a creature or artifact of that card's house, if able. If two cards are not destroyed as a result of this, destroy a Crazy Killing Machine. Interesting card to bring back. And Rocket Boots. It's an upgrade. This creature gains Fight Reap. If it's the first time this creature is used this turn, ready it. Hmm, I've already seen some Shadows creatures. I wouldn't mind putting that on. Wild Wormhole. And whenever you play it, play the top card of your deck. Two of those. Wow. Standardized Testing. Play. Destroy each creature with the lowest power and each creature with the highest power. I do like that card. Professor Sutterkin. I've seen some people play this. I have never actually opened one. Two power. Reap. Draw a card for each friendly Logos creature. If this guy survives, this is a huge effect. Pip Pip, two power, after an enemy creature reaps, stun it. Lab work, Amber W play it, archive a card. Cutthroat research, Amber W play it, steal two if your opponent has eight or more amber. Pretty nice. Archimedes, two power, elusive, each of his neighbors gains. Destroyed, archive this creature, fight with this guy's neighbors, take out their creatures. Every time the neighbor's destroyed, it goes to your archive, then fight with the next one. You can do some really big plays with this guy. Oh, and you have two of them. <laughs> cool. Hecato, Amber, whenever you play it, destroy each disc creature. Each player gains one Amber for each creature they controlled that was destroyed this way. Okay, let's see what sort of disc creatures you have in here. 
Old Yerk, five power play, choose and discard two cards from their hand. I see a lot of people that are down on these Yerk cards. Being able to get the best cards and play them again and kind of cycle away the weaker cards for whatever the situation is, it's really good. Tezmal, two power elusive. Reap, choose a house. Your opponent cannot choose that house as their active house on the next turn. You're hoping for two of these because you can get a crazy lockout. Nope. Schuler, though, five power. If your opponent has four more amber, you get to steal one. Very nice. Not finished with you, and whatever you play, it shuffle any number of creatures from your discard pile into your deck. That's a good card. Misery Exploit. Gain one amber for each damaged enemy creature. Hmm. I have not had enough experience with this card, but I would imagine this thing could get really big. Exhume. One amber whenever you play it, choose a creature in your discard pile. You may play that creature as if it belonged to the active house and was in your hand. That is a really fantastic card. <laughs> I did it again! And you have two of them! <laughs> <laughs> it's so good because you're able to call back whatever your best creature in discard pile is for whatever the situation may be. And yeah, this is just always going to be an excellent card. Dust Imp, two power, destroyed, gain two amber. Very nice. Call of the Weak, amber at every plate, destroy the least powerful enemy creature. Wow, that's awesome. So in Call of the Archons, uh, you know, destroying the least powerful creature was usually not a good thing, but in this set, all of these just amazing effects are attached to these tiny one and two power creatures. So. A lot of times, this might actually be taking out your opponent's most powerful creature, just not power-wise. Charette, four power play, capture three amber. That is really good to see in the set. You need some sort of amber control, and that's one of the best. The last card of the deck is Binding Irons. Play, your opponent gains three chains. This is bigger than what most people think. It's not like it's absolutely insane, but this is really detrimental to your opponent, so that's a good card to see. Let's go back through this. And first things first, let's get all of our amber up top. Kind of see how much amber you'd expect in one go around with this deck. Okay. Ooh, yeah, those wild wormholes. Hmm. Man, that gets you an amber too, and that's a great effect again. This is, uh, yeah, this is pretty good. Get the steel here. Ah, this one's so questionable. That one's pretty good. Oh yeah, like those. Oh, Rig Lottery, okay. So I touched base with this earlier. Obviously Rig Lottery is still amazing if your opponent doesn't have shadows. I'm expecting to get usually two amber out of this. The one for playing, one down there. Obviously sometimes it can get better, but it's a good solid two. There's four. Most of the time you're gonna get five out of that. This, man, this is so hard to say. Um, I think on an average game, you, you might wanna just call this a three. I think you might actually only play this one out of three times. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to go. So we're only going to count this as a six. It's kind of awkward. Never really had to do that with one of these cards before, but that's a six. Seven. There's eight. Nine. Uh, you know what? You might actually get another one for a forged key. We'll call that ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Question ball on that steel. Sixteen. Probably seventeen. Odds are you're going to get rid of one of your disc creatures as well. So seventeen. 18, 19, wait a minute, this is interesting. Expect at least one 20, 21, 22, 24, 25. Wow, okay. That is really high for Age of Ascension. Uh, the only problem with this is there are some that might help your opponent as well. Hecatomb, maybe. Rigged Lottery, maybe. But 25, holy, that's uh, really strong. Let's kind of look at the creatures now. See here, we got one, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, that has to be wrong. I've never seen that few creatures in an Age of Ascension deck. I had to have missed something, right? There is no way that you have that many actions and artifacts? What is this? And upgrades? This is nuts! What is, oh my gosh! This is like a Call of the Archons deck. The only problem with that is, it makes things like Lamindra's effects lessened in this. Same with your Archimedes, you have two of those. Oh man. Oh, I don't, this is so weird to think about. It's so familiar because of the first step, at the same time, it's not. So we're gonna have to, okay. Archimedes, the values dropped, this is dropped. How are you gonna play this? And Bad Penny is just not a great creature to see. How many Logos creatures do you add? There's three, 
four, okay. Uh, four creatures, a little light. I don't know how much you're going to be able to use that effect. Uh, same with, I mean, that his effect is lessened. Thank goodness Pip-Pip at least is going to make your opponent have to fight him. Because uh, they don't necessarily want to stun all their creatures whenever they reap. I like that these guys have Elusive, that's nice. Old Jerk, once again, this thing is almost like an action. He's just helping you cycle through your deck, which, now that we see it has all that Amber, is a very powerful effect. You know, so I think actually the way that this deck is going to play creatures-wise is, other than like Shuler and Dust Imp, a lot of these, you're playing them down and you're forcing your opponent to not be able to reap because they're going to look at it as a threat and they're going to say, all right, I got to fight and take care of that creature. So you're taking away some Amber from them just by playing the creatures, and that is sometimes good enough, especially considering this is just crazy. Uh, something else I want to check. Let's pull out the upgrades. Huh, you have this card, and you don't really have many things to go well with it. I mean, it's nice to move around like a Lamindra, but, yeah, I just don't know how great that is. Let's see here, yeah, so you had Rocket Boots, which I would love to put on, like, Ganges, so you can potentially steal more Amber. Oh, of course, well, Rocket Boots on Tezmal, hello. The only problem is I don't think you're really able to control your opponent's board that much, so odds are they're going to be able to take care of this, but that would be insane. Make it where your opponent can only choose one house. Hmm, yeah, that's really good. Heck, you could maybe even potentially, now as I said, odds are super low, have this on another creature so you can use him again. Hey, you can make it where your opponent can't choose four different houses. <laughs> so if they somehow steal one of yours, how funny is that to think about? It's not gonna happen though. Uh, but what is important to note is, you know, these upgrades, sometimes you won't have the creatures out because the creature count is so low and it might be best to discard them. I don't think you want to sit there and hold on to these uh, just to hope to eventually draw a Logos creature, drop this on the same turn, or the Shadows creature. So you might actually discard those, but the rest of these actions, wow. These are very nice. So let's kind of look at uh, damage and board control you have. You have the Special Deliveries. Questionable, so I'm not going to count that. Nerve Blast is nice. <laughs> you know, Wild Wormholes and Labrick, they also go into that cycling little factor. That's awesome. Uh, not finished with you getting back. No, let's see. Yeah, I mean, this kind of is removal in a sense. It's not removal, but it's going to bring back the creatures that are problems your opponent's going to have to deal with. I said, you just want to kind of slow them down with this deck. Exhumes. Let's kind of look at that again. Cold of Week, that's good. Standardized Testing. Standardized Testing is actually really good in this deck because you have so few creatures. Odds are you're going to hit at least two of your opponent's creatures every time, so that's really good in here. And the fact that it cycles is excellent as well. So, yeah, let's see here. Exhumes, yeah, it's just the creature package is just so weird. I think a lot of times with Exhum, you're just going to try and stall them again. Uh, whether it's going to be getting the Tezmal, try and set that up, or more, more than likely, you're actually going to choose Charette. Every so often, Schuler. Every so often, Dust Imp. I think you're just going to use that most of the time with your disc creatures. Uh, unless your opponent also has a small board as, uh, as well. If they have a lot of... If they're also playing a lot of actions, then you might choose something like Lamindra because then you're going to make it where their creatures aren't necessarily able to take out some of these other guys. So yeah, that's it's real interesting. Most of time I think it's going to target this. This is a very, very odd deck. I'm so glad I don't have to rate these right now because <laughs> the set is too new to really give these decks a score because uh, this would give me a hell of a time, especially right now. Um, it just has a lot of great effects. I love the amber in here. I love the cycling it has. I mean, there's just so much amber in here that that old Yurk, you just get rid of a card that isn't going to give you any amber, and you just push through your deck. You're, it's like the first AOA rush deck I've seen that has a decent amount of amber control with it as well, which is just, uh, it's pretty cool. It really is. Uh, so this, I, I really would love to be able to rate it, but I can't. Just kind of pulling up some of the amber control here. Yeah, just, just to show that you have, you know, a couple different ways. Actually, in this deck, because you have so few creatures, Swindle might actually be a better card. And you, you make so much Amber that it's kind of okay. Yeah, this is uh, what a what a very odd and interesting deck you have here. You're going to have to let me know how this one plays. It's like, I feel like I want to know how all these decks play now, because the set just came out, and it's just, it's a whole new experience. And yeah, it's, it's going to be so much fun. Just playing with these decks all the time now. Um, I hope you guys are out there having a lot of fun playing with Age of Ascension, because I know I am. 
Just want to remind everyone that tomorrow's video is going to be the two drawings for the patrons at the two and up level and the five and up level. So I look forward to seeing what they get out of this box right here. And I will see you guys next time.